Hey, Brooke. How's Kyle doing after what happened? Is he coping? He's not down in the dumps or anything, is he? Is he eating right? Does he have enough books? You know how much he loves his reading. He's fine, chill. It's been a week since the accident now. Of course he has a lot of free time on his hands in the hospital than he's used to. But I can assure you he's been using it wisely by grumbling and complaining to the max. I see. Well, in that case, I'm pleased. If he's still lively enough to be grumbling and complaining, there's nothing to worry about. I'll be coming to see him again in the next few days. Okay, I'll pass on the message. I think it really counts to have your mom by your bedside at times like this. He appreciates your visits a lot. Kyle appreciates me? Judging from the look on his face when I'm there, I get the feeling I'm annoying him simply by having the nerve to exist in his vicinity. Besides, he told me I'm a pain in his butt on more than one occasion. Oh, you don't believe that bluster, do you? He's just trying to look tough because he doesn't want to admit how soothed and comforted he feels by having his mommy by his bedside. He said he's always thinking of you. Well, it'd be great if that were true. You must have been pretty scared yourself, right, Brooke? This whole thing can't have been easy for you. I heard you were in the car when he crashed the car? That's right. I was in the passenger seat when it happened. Kyle's the last person I thought would ever crash the car. Even the safest drivers have accidents, and it's usually precisely because we don't think they'll happen that they do. It was his fault, and no one else was involved, right? I can't say I'm pleased about my son being laid up in a hospital bed, but on the bright side, at least no one else got hurt. He only has himself to blame. We can't turn back the clock, but at least he can learn the valuable lessons that there are to be learned there. Right, I totally agree. He said he's going to be taking a break from driving for a little while once he gets out of the hospital. How long did they say he'd be in for again? A month, right? Hopefully he has a long, hard think about his driving habits. Oh, believe me, he's already been doing some soul searching. I don't think he's under any illusions over who was to blame. Oh yeah, I forgot. I wanted to thank you again. We really appreciate you sending the money for Kyle's hospital stay. His insurance didn't cover it, so we would have been in a really bad situation without your help. Oh, don't be silly, I'm his mother. You can hardly afford to shell out that much yourself, could you? I know you said you've been struggling lately. It was nothing, really. But it was so sudden. I think Kyle feels guilty, and he wants you to know how grateful he is. Him crashing the car into a wall like that was pretty sudden as well. Besides, it's not like he did it on purpose. He has no reason to feel guilty. Sometimes life just throws curveballs at you. And what are mothers for if not dashing to the rescue and saving the day in a rush of heroic maternal glory? Fair point. Thanks for saying that. I couldn't agree more with everything you just said. To tell you the truth, it's actually kind of a pain in the ass how easily little things like this seem to play on his mind. Oh, um, it is? But Brooke, dear, surely it's only natural he'd be upset after what he did. He's always had a strong sense of responsibility, and he hates feeling like he's being a burden on others. I think it's perfectly normal. But you just said he has no reason to feel guilty? I'm saying I agree with you. I keep telling him he has nothing to feel bad about. But he seems hell-bent on beating himself up over it. I can't help but to think he overthinks things sometimes. He's so goddamn sensitive. I actually felt a huge sense of relief when you just said what I've been thinking this whole time. So thanks for that. Sure, he might overthink things at times, but still. Don't you think it's more complicated than that this time? Huh? But you just said he shouldn't feel guilty. Wait, were you lying? What? Lying? No, of course I wasn't. It's just... Uh, how to put this? Just because I don't think he should feel guilty about what happened doesn't mean I think he should be nonchalant and indifferent towards it either. If anything, I'm proud of him for being so considerate towards others. Is there a problem with being nonchalant and indifferent when you've done nothing wrong? You're my mom-in-law, and that makes me your daughter. What's with this weird formality all of a sudden? Since when were you this stiff and reserved? You can speak your mind with me, you know? I see. Well, I suppose if that's how you feel about it, then you do you, sweetie. Right? I will. Okay then, it's settled. From now on, carefree is the word. Our days of fretting over trivial teas are gonna be nothing but a distant memory.
Um, right, got it. All right, well, Brooke, I have some shopping to do now, so I'll speak with you later. Take care. Mom, please can you lend me some money? We're in the mother of all pinches here. You're the only person I can rely on. Oh, Brooke, please, would you stop doing this? You asked me the exact same thing last week. I made it very clear that I wouldn't be giving you anything. Why do you insist on doing this? I know I did, but Mom, we're really in a pinch here. Like, really, really, really. Anyone would think I was a stranger, not your freaking daughter-in-law. Surely you should be more sympathetic towards our situation. Why you gotta be so heckin' frosty? Listen to me, Brooke. If you're genuinely in trouble and need help, of course I want to be there for you. Well, in that case, why won't you? You're contradicting yourself a little here, you know? How many times do I have to say it? We're genuinely in trouble. Our situation is desperate. When you say genuinely in trouble, do you remember the previous reasons you gave me for saying you needed me to lend you money? Yes, of course I do. We're struggling to stay afloat financially. Because vegetable prices have been going through the roof lately. Right. And the month before that, it was because the gasoline prices had gone up. What was it the month before? I forgot. Oh, yes, the electricity bill was soaring, right? I don't remember well either. But probably that. Everybody knows the cost of living has been going through the roof lately, and normal hard-working folks like us just can't get by as easily as we used to. Probably that. Oh, I see. Anyways, let's forget about that for a moment. What I wanted to ask you is, why don't you understand how unreasonable it is to come begging me for money every time your living expenses go up? How is that unreasonable? You're right, I don't understand at all. We're your family, and we're in trouble. You're the one who said it was your job as Kyle's mom to dash to the rescue and save the day when life throws curveballs at us. Surely helping us at times like this is the decent, moral, and obvious thing to do? It's not that I don't want to be there for you. The problem is that every time you ask for money, it's for the smallest, pettiest things. Think about it. If I have to come to the rescue every time your outgoings go up slightly, it'll never end. Kyle's got out of the hospital and went back to work months ago. It's not like you two are on one salary anymore. I never heard anything about either of you taking a pay cut either. Look, dear, I know we're in a cost of living crisis, but how can you suddenly be in the mother of all pinches just because cucumber prices went up? Surely if you two do some brainstorming together, you can figure out a way to get through this somehow? I'm asking you precisely because we can't cope without your help. Why would you believe me? You're horrible. You lent us money without so much as a single complaint before. What changed? I sent the money back then because my son had been in a car accident. That was an emergency. Surely you see the difference between a car crash and the things you're asking me to open my purse for every month these days? I get that. Look, I don't know exactly how much Kyle brings home every month. But you've never had any problems like this until recently, so I could ask you the same thing. What changed, Brooke? You'll be fine if you just tighten your belts a little. You know, like eating out less, canceling things like Peeps Flix subscriptions, making sure the lights are turned off, that kind of thing. This is hardly rocket science. It must be nice to have the luxury of saying all these things from a position of complete financial security. Life isn't so easy for us mere mortals, you know. Yes, that's right, I know. You're sitting on a tidy little nest egg in that savings account of yours, aren't you? I see. I take it you heard from Kyle? He let it slip after he had a few beers the other night. I'm pretty sure he didn't mean to tell me. It's real nice to know how trusted I am in this family. Like, jeez, thanks for sharing, Mom. Anyway, if you have so much money, what's the issue with lending us a few cents here and there to help us get by when times are tough? Why does it have to turn into this big drama? Just quit complaining and hand over your bank card already. You do know that my savings and your household finances are completely unrelated, don't you? Just because I have money does not mean I'm obliged to give it to you. What kind of logic is that? Besides, if you're really in as much trouble as you say you are, 
Why are you the only one who ever comes begging to me like this? If times are so tough, why haven't I heard so much as a word out of Kyle? Duh, isn't it obvious? He's way too proud to admit we're struggling. How's he supposed to feel like the man of the house if he has to beg his mommy for pocket money? In that case, you won't have any problem with me confirming all this with him directly, will you? You know that your finances are in such dire straits that you have to beg your mother-in-law for money several times a month? Oh, come on. There's no need to do that and you know it. That's just mean-spirited. Think about how it would make your son feel. The bottom line here is that you need to learn to overcome life's challenges by yourselves. If you rely on others at the first sign of trouble, not only will you have no problem-solving ability of your own, but you'll be finished as soon as the support dries up. I have absolute faith in you both to get through this and to become stronger people for it. If you accept and understand all of the above, and you still say you're in desperate trouble, I'll be here for you. Uh, but... Just because we're not at risk of being homeless this week doesn't mean we're not in trouble. Do we have to be on death's door before you start caring about us? You know, all of this time you spend asking me for money could be spent figuring out how to improve your situation. Less talk, more action. First, do what you can. If after that you tell me you're still hopelessly in trouble, I'll consider helping you after discussing things with Kyle. Fine, I understand. Sorry for being so persistent. <sighs> Don't worry about it. I'm grateful for your understanding. I understand things aren't easy for you right now, but you can't go through life relying on others all of the time. If you did, you really would end up in the mother of all pinches when no one was there to save you. Hey mom, guess what? I've been doing some thinking. Hmm? Brooke? What's this all of a sudden? Have you had some kind of religious epiphany? What have you been thinking about? Remember how you scolded me before for asking for money? Well, you gave me pause for thought, and I've pondered long and hard on the matter. So anyway, I'll get right to it. I have a suggestion. Hear me out. I hardly scolded you, dear. But it is important to consider other people's feelings and opinions, especially when they differ from your own, and the ability to do so is a sign of real maturity. The fact that you took the time to seriously think about what I said makes me very happy. Cool, thanks for saying so. Okay, well, I'm ready for it. The suspense is killing me. What's your suggestion? So, you have a lot of savings, right? But you told me it was no good for me and Kyle to rely on your money unless in case of emergency, right? That's right. We might be family. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't have boundaries. And relying on others all the time isn't good for anyone. On the other hand, it seems like such a waste for you to keep all that money to yourself without putting it to good use. Uh, excuse me? Forgive me, Brooke. Maybe I'm misunderstanding you here, but... By any chance, has the subject changed? Nope, we're still on the topic. Just bear with me, I'm building up. Where was I? Oh yeah, you said it yourself. It's no good to rely on others too much, right? That's why I think we should move in together. What? I'm sorry, but I don't understand this at all. What on earth led you to that conclusion? Think about it. If we move in with you and we all live together, We'd all be on the same team. You lending us money wouldn't count as us relying on others anymore. Um, it wouldn't? That's right, it wouldn't. And actually, scratch lending. If we all lived under the same roof, there would be no our money or your money because we'd all be contributing to the same pot. Your money would become everyone's money. I can't believe I didn't think of it sooner. Let's do it, let's live together. Hold your horses, Brooke, please. Don't you see how absurd what you're suggesting here is? I don't understand your logic at all. No, I can't and I won't. It's not happening. Why not? Surely living with us would give you more peace of mind, too. Ah, that's it. You're worried about the housework, aren't you? No. Not wanting my son and daughter-in-law to move in with me has nothing to do with the housework. Do you have no inkling of how ridiculous what you're asking me to do is? Relax. You don't need to worry at all. I won't interfere with you doing the housework one bit. I'll never get in your way. In fact, I bet you won't even know I'm there half the time. 
I just told you that isn't the point. Hey, wait a sec. Are you saying you want to move in with me but don't intend to do any housework? I am, but trust me, this makes sense. Think about it, me and Kyle have only been married for a year, right? Which means I'm still learning the ropes as a housewife. There's still a lot of stuff I'm not sure about, and a lot of things that don't come naturally to me yet. You, on the other hand, are a veteran with decades of experience. Not only would it be rude of me to assume I could do even half as good a job as someone as skillful as you, but it'd also be way more efficient if you did it all for us. Ugh, oh, good grief. Alright, you listen to me, Brooke, and I'm aware of how rude this will sound, but I just don't care anymore. I'm so disgusted with you, I struggle for words. That's not important right now. What's important is that we move in with you ASAP and live together as one big happy family. So what do you say? We'll handle stuff like having our things sent over on our end. You moved house last month, right? I don't know your new address yet. Could you tell me it? This conversation is pointless. There's no getting through to you. I take it Kyle is aware of this little scheme of yours. I'll discuss the matter with him directly. What are you talking about? Kyle doesn't know anything about this. Wait, what? Are you being serious? You're talking about moving house and your husband doesn't know? Yep, that's right. To tell you the truth, the idea only just came to me and I got excited. I just had to pitch the idea to you straight away. But relax, it's fine. I'm certain Kyle's gonna be on board with it. He's smart after all. Wow, Brooke just... Wow, were you always like this? I don't even know how to respond. But I do know one thing, how arrogantly and selfishly you're behaving right now only strengthens my resolve not to let you move in with me. It is not happening. Um, like, what the hell? Your daughter-in-law's telling you she wants to move in with you here. Anyone else would be pleased. I'm not so sure about that. Anyway, there's no point in carrying on this conversation if Kyle doesn't know about what you're doing. I'm going to go speak with him directly. I have nothing more to say to you. God, you're so freaking annoying. How could you be so ungrateful? I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. Do you know how dangerous it is for an old hag like you to live all on her own? We're moving in with you, so hurry up and tell me your address. Oh, <sighs> today has been an unusual one. Who would have thought it's possible to be this disgusted with a single person so many times in one day? It's actually impressive. Stop talking nonsense and accept my very kind offer already! You think I've got all day to be wasting on this stupid conversation? Some of us have jobs to work and finances to worry about, you know? Calm down, Brooke. Deep breaths. In, out. You came at me like such a whirlwind I didn't get a chance to tell you this. But I already live with someone, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to take you up on your offer. You're better off just forgetting the whole thing. Huh? You're already living with someone? You never told me that! Who is it? Since when? Why wouldn't you tell me something so important? Isn't it obvious? Who would I live with other than my family? My second son and his wife, of course. You are right about me moving house last month, but it wasn't to be on my own. I moved in with the two of them. I wasn't lying when I said you couldn't move in with me, you know. What you're suggesting is literally impossible. What the? No! How dare you be so selfish! Do you have any idea how much trouble this puts me and Kyle in? We need your savings! Undo it! Get out of their house and move in with us! You can't be serious. I know you know that's not going to happen. I knew that was what you were after all along, by the way, but it's at least nice to hear you admit it. You'd stop at nothing to get your claws into my money, would you? As long as I know that behind every word that comes out of your mouth lies nothing but an insatiable desire for my money, I have no reason to talk to you. Not now, not next week, not ever. If that upsets you, I suggest you go off and cry into your pillow alone because there's nothing you can do to change my mind. You just hold on a goddamn freaking minute! I'm not done speaking yet! I'm terribly sorry, Brooke, but I'm busy. Me, my eldest son, and his wife are all going to a hot spring resort today. Gotta go! Bye! A hot spring resort? Now? Right now of all times? You cannot be serious! Ugh! Mom! Are you there? Mom! Mom!
Brooke, you came to our house yesterday, didn't you? You broke the window and let yourself in, didn't you? Huh? It'd be, like, really nice if you didn't make false accusations against me, you know. Thanks. I don't know anything about your house getting anything broken into. It seems like I was wrong about you, Brooke. I thought you were a little more intelligent than this. I didn't think you had it in you to be this recklessly brash and impulsive. Whatever. If we're honest, this is all your fault. You know that, right? Did you really think I was gonna let you get away with keeping the whole moving in with your son and his wife thing secret from me? If you'd have just kept your mouth shut and given me your bank card like anyone with half a brain would have done, you wouldn't be in this mess. Regret won't get you anywhere now. You dug your grave, now lie in it. I couldn't agree more. It really was careless of me to tell you I moved in with my second son. I've been a fool. Wow, you're self-aware? I suppose you'd be a total lost cause if you weren't capable of self-reflection at your ripe old age. <laughs> Let's face it, you're not as young as you used to be. If you'd have waited any longer, you might have kicked the bucket without realizing what a gigantic moron you are. You're right. Thanks for helping me notice, sweetie. You see, I'm so grateful, but I want to give you a little something by way of thanks. So I got you a present. Huh? A present? What is it? You should know that I don't accept cheap stuff. It's fine, relax. It's even more valuable than my bank card. You know, the one you took from this house? In a certain sense, it's actually something really unusual. Huh? What could you possibly be talking about? I can barely take the suspense. I don't know anything about your bank card either. You're barking up the wrong tree. Oh, really? Is that so? How tragic. In that case, my present is meaningless. Huh? Meaningless? How so? What's the present? Tell me! You see, I spoke to the police about what happened yesterday. We have witness testimonies from the neighbors. Something tells me you might get a knock at the door from some men in uniform with a couple of questions to ask you very soon. Wait, what? You spoke to the cops? Why would you do that? What's the problem? You have nothing to worry about. It wasn't you after all. Sorry if you find it boring, but I thought it'd be perfect for you. The present is police questioning, just for you. Congrats, honey. No, wait, 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 wait. You can't seriously be saying you reported me, your own daughter-in-law to the police? I'm your son's wife. You seem a little perturbed. Is everything okay? Surely you have no reason to panic like this. What's the problem? It wasn't you after all. I know you're probably busy and having a bunch of stern looking cops grilling you on the sofa might not have been how you envisioned yourself spending today. But you clearly had nothing to do with it, so I'm sure they'll be out of your hair before you know it. I'm sorry. I lied. I knew it. So it was you? Yes. I was so mad about the whole moving in with your other son thing, I wanted to get back at you somehow. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I see. It's fine, relax, you have nothing to worry about. I told you, right? This is a present. How can I relax? I might be about to get arrested here. And how the hell does calling the cops on me count as a present? It's a present because I am very kindly giving you an opportunity to reflect on what you've done and become a better human being. So why don't you have a long, hard think about your behavior and fix that rotten personality of yours? That's what me and Kyle want you to do. We both have high hopes for your rehabilitation. We'd be over the moon if you accepted it with some gratitude because this is the last present you'll ever get from this old hag. After that, my shamed daughter-in-law was taken away in handcuffs by the police in front of a crowd of very shocked neighbors. I know I told her she was only going to be questioned, but that was because I didn't want to panic her so much she tried to escape. Between the witness testimonies from the neighbors and the footage from the surveillance camera my son installed in the garage, she didn't have a leg to stand on, and her arrest was basically a foregone conclusion at the moment I reported her. My son Kyle divorced his criminal of a wife as soon as he found out what she'd done. I hope she uses this as an opportunity to reflect, but I'm not holding my breath. 
Me and Kyle are praying that she uses this whole situation as an opportunity to change her ways and become a better human being, even if just a little. That said, even if she does repent and change her ways, even if she becomes a shining bastion of all that is good and virtuous, we'll never know because she's no longer a part of our lives. She can get by on her own now. Hey Amelia, I finished work. I'm gonna head home pretty soon. Is there anything ready to eat? Okay, great. Yeah, dinner is already cooked and ready. Are you going to eat as soon as you come home? Hmm, no. I guess I'll have a bath and clean up first. Could you fill it up for me so it's ready when I get there? No problem. I can do that. By the way, about our trip. Were you able to get the days off that you wanted? Yeah, I did. No problems on that front at all. I mean, I did have to push it a little bit to the boss, but at the end of the day, time off is time off. I can't say no to everything. Oh, that's good to hear. Lisa has been looking forward to it for so long as well. She would have been so upset if we had to cancel the trip. It is her first trip with us, after all. We haven't had the chance to go all the three of us together. Everything just got so busy after she was born. There simply hasn't been the chance for us to get away. She is just dying to go. I'm also excited to go on a trip for the first time in so long. I'm glad you were able to get those days off. My parents are excited too. Looks like mom has picked all the places she wants to go to while we're away too. I'm really grateful to your parents. I mean, they are footing the majority of the bill this time. I don't think we would have been able to afford this trip if we had paid for the entire thing alone. Me neither. They're really helping us out big time here. Make sure you say thanks properly. Of course I will. But why are you acting like it's only me that needs to? <laughs> Well, I am their son after all, so it's fine. Plus, the house we're living in right now is technically theirs too. I know that. You don't need to tell me. That's why we're getting them a present. Which was my idea, by the way. Yeah, okay, okay. Did you get the present already? No, not yet. We still have enough time before the trip. The day before we leave is the best time. Besides, you said you would come with me to buy it. Really? I said that? Yes. Lisa is going to the movie with her friend's family that day, too, so we don't have to worry about one of us staying home to look after her. We talked about this before. Oh yeah, I remember now. Sorry, I completely forgotten about it. Come on, Tyler. You can't be forgetting important things like this. I won't know what's a good present or not if I go by myself. I need you to help me choose. You know them better than I do, after all. Okay, I got it. If I wake up in time, let's go together. What do you mean, if? You made a promise, so keep your end of it. It's not that I don't want to go with you, but I have to drive and pick my parents up the following day. So if possible, I'd like to relax a bit the day before. I get what you're trying to say, but... Okay, fine. But I'm going to send you some pictures, so at least tell me what you think, okay? Okay, got it. I can do that, no problem. The train's about to arrive at the station. Okay. Be careful on your way home. Lisa and I are waiting for you. <coughs> Amelia, so is all I need to bring a change of clothes for Lisa? Or is there something else I need to bring? Thanks, Tyler. But could you also bring a change of clothes for me too? For you too? Are you planning on staying the night there too? Yeah, I've decided to. I'm worried about how she's going to be on our first day in the hospital. I asked the doctor, and he said he was fine for me to stay. Lisa would be worried all on her own here, too. Okay, I see. Then I'll bring clothes for the two of you. Thanks. But man, did I get a shock. Getting that phone call out of nowhere telling me that Lisa got hit by a car? I don't know what to think. They say she ran out onto the street while she was with her friends in the park. She was with some older kids and their mom, too. It seems like the mom was a bit careless and wasn't watching them properly. I wish I'd gone with her that day. But at least she didn't have any serious injuries, even if she is in the hospital. Yeah, you're right. Luckily, the driver of the car was able to hit the brakes in time. 
She does have cuts and bumps, but thankfully no broken bones. She also only has to stay in the hospital for a few tests, just to be sure. And everything is all fine. There's no point thinking about what's happened already. It can't be changed. I know that. But even so, it's hard not to think about what would have happened if I had gone with her. She might not be in the situation at all. Aren't you worried about her at all? Of course I am. But like I said, the accident happened, and we can't change anything by grumbling about it. And since she didn't get hurt too badly, she can still come on the trip with us, right? What? There's no way she can. Why not? Even though her injuries aren't that serious, she still needs some tests to make sure everything is okay. I just told you that. But isn't she gonna get let out tomorrow? No, they want her to stay for almost a week. And not just that, she's still only a little kid. She needs to rest after something like this happens. She might even have some kind of trauma from this. Going on a trip is completely out of the question. Oh, I didn't realize she would be there for that long. I guess it can't be helped then. Well, then the two of you hold down the fort. I guess it's just my parents and me then. What? Tyler, hold on a sec. You can't seriously be thinking about still going under these circumstances. Why not? Everything is booked and paid for already. It would be a complete waste if the entire trip got canceled. So those who are able should still go. It's better just to cancel. But we paid a lot for this trip. It's too much of a waste. Plus, my parents have been looking forward to the trip. I'd feel bad if they also couldn't go because of us. This isn't about that. And if anything, you should feel bad for Lisa, not your parents. She was super excited for the trip, and now she can't go because she was hit by a car. And on top of all of that, now you want to leave her behind and go on the trip anyway? Poor Lisa. Imagine how she would feel if she heard that. It's not like we're leaving her behind. She just can't go because she's in the hospital. Lisa is old enough to understand this at this point. She's still in elementary school. There's no way she could understand why she's being left behind. Even if that is the case, I've already made up my mind to go. There's no way we're missing this. Why are you being like this? We can always just take the trip another time. And your parents will understand that this is a serious situation. But why waste this opportunity? They had to take time off of work for this too, remember? Anyway, I don't need your permission. I'm going no matter what you say. Are you really being serious about this? Of course. That's how it's gonna be. I'll still bring you a lease of your clothes though, so don't worry about that. Did you end up buying a present for my parents? Yeah, I did. I left it at home. Okay, then I'll give it to them for you. Look after yourself and Lisa while we're gone. We finally arrived. Oh, there's lots of traffic on the way. I guess lots of people are heading up this way for the summer. The drive really took it out of me. You actually went? Your daughter is in the hospital after being hit by a car and you went on a holiday? I was still thinking that you were making some bad joke. Of course I went. I told you I was going. So, how is Lisa? Is she doing well? How can you even ask me that so casually? You left her in the hospital and went on holiday. You'll regret this later. What's that all about? It's natural for me to care about my own daughter. Don't come at me like that. So, how is she? Is everything okay? Well, it still only just happened the other day, so she's still afraid. But everything seems fine with her physical health. The doctors ran some scans to make sure she didn't hit her head and get a concussion or anything, but it looks like we're in the clear. That's good news. I would have felt bad if that weren't the case. What do you mean by feel bad? I was finally able to go on vacation, but I wouldn't have been able to enjoy myself if Lisa was in a bad state. But now that she's fine, I can relax and enjoy the trip. You're saying that for real too, aren't you? It's not just some bad joke? Why would I be joking? And honestly, what's been up with you recently? With me? Yeah, you have some sort of weird attitude. If you have something to say, then say it outright. Stop beating around the bush. There's nothing in particular. I just realized what kind of person you are. That's all. That's exactly what I'm talking about. 
Stop being so vague and just spit it out. Your words make no sense. Speak clear with me, okay? Thanks for the advice. But don't worry. I'm just in a bad mood right now. I think I'll be fine the next time we see each other. Why are you in a bad mood? Is it because you couldn't come on the trip? It couldn't be helped though, right? That's just how things happen to work out this time around. Yeah, you're right. The situation couldn't be helped. So you understand then, don't you? What am I supposed to understand? I just told you to stop being so vague. It doesn't mean anything particularly deep. What are you on about? Well, whatever. The others are waiting for me. I'll talk to you later. Hold on a second. What is it? I'm in a bit of a hurry. Are you really okay with what you said earlier? You won't regret it later? Yeah, yeah, I won't regret it. Is that what you wanted to hear? Is that what you wanted to hear? Yeah, that's fine, thanks. I really don't get what you're talking about, though. Anyway, look after Lisa and say hi to her for me. Make sure to have enough fun for the two of us. Right, have as much fun as you can. It is your last trip, after all. My last trip? I don't see why that would be the case. Next time, we'll all go together. Sorry, Amelia. I know I was supposed to come back yesterday, but we extended the trip by a day. It's fine. I guess it must have been a really good trip if you wanted to stay even longer. I wouldn't really say that. It's just that my parents were basically begging to stay for just one more night. They offered to pay for as well, so what could I really do? Is that why you stayed longer? Didn't you have fun yourself? Of course I did. But Lisa is in the hospital. I was worried about you guys. I really was. Really? But you were still able to have fun, right? So, that's all good then. I guess so. I hadn't been on a trip with my parents for a long time. So it was pretty enjoyable. Oh yeah, I brought you guys some presents. Really? Thanks. I'm sure Lisa will be happy too. It was the least I could do. By the way, it looks like you're in a better mood now. You can tell? Yeah, I guess my mood has improved a lot. I thought so. That's good to hear. You seemed really off on the first day that I left. I was really hoping you wouldn't still be like that when I came back. Did something good happen? Yeah, actually, it did. With Lisa getting into the accident, it really seemed like nothing good would happen after that. But something good finally happened too. It really made me feel much better. Wow, that much? So what happened then? I'll tell you about the trip later. So tell me about what happened while I was away. Sure. So you see, I decided to file for divorce. Wait, what? Who's getting divorced? You and me are. What are you talking about? You're joking, right? Why would we get divorced? Nope, it's not a joke. Plus, I talked to your parents, and they decided to let me and Lisa have the house. So you need to pack your things and get out by the end of the day. Although, there isn't really anything of yours left to pack. I really don't understand what you're talking about. My parents let you have the house? None of my things are there anymore? None of that makes any sense. It means exactly what it sounds like. It isn't too complicated. I messaged your parents the day you all left and asked them for some favors. What favors? Do you mean getting the house? Why would you do that? Well, you know, if I had to move after the divorce, then Lisa would probably have to change schools based on the district. And she just started making friends at her school, so it would be sad to have to move her elsewhere, right? That's what I'm asking you. I'm asking why I'm getting kicked out of the house all of a sudden. And on top of that, what is all this talk of divorce? You can ask your parents why you need to move out. I need to ask them? Why don't you just tell me? You didn't tell them anything about what happened to Lisa, did you? You told them that Lisa and I couldn't go because Lisa caught a cold and I needed to stay behind to look after her. Well, you see, I didn't want them to worry too much and not be able to enjoy the trip, so I decided not to tell them about the accident. I don't care about that. Once they found out the real reason, they were pretty angry about it. How angry? They wanted to cancel the trip and come back straight away. But I needed time to prepare to move out with Lisa, so I asked them to hold off for a bit and keep you there. 
And not only did they do that for me, but they also told me that I could have the house and just get rid of all of your things instead of moving. Wait, is that why they insisted on staying an extra night? Yep. It was just to buy me some time to get things sorted. Thanks to them, I had enough time to get the divorce papers in order and move all of your things from the house and put them outside. They really helped me out. Wait a second, Amelia! I get that I might be in the wrong this time, but can we stop this talk of divorce and leaving the house? Why? Won't this all leave a bad taste in your mouth? I mean, Elisa might see it as her fault that we're getting divorced. Since it's kind of caused by her accident, you don't want her to blame yourself, do you? So, let's just think it over. You're the one who went on holiday while your daughter was in the hospital after being hit by a car? What could leave a worse taste in my mouth after that? The divorce is entirely your fault. Don't try and make it sound as though Lisa caused this. That's not what I meant. But not only that, Lisa was only in the first grade. It wouldn't be good for her if we got a divorce. She's too young. You don't really have the right to be talking about what's good for our daughter after prioritizing a holiday over her. How many times did I ask you if you were sure you wouldn't regret what you were doing? And you said that you wouldn't. I didn't know what you were talking about when you said that. But you still said you wouldn't regret anything, so you should accept any outcome in that case. I think you paid a plenty high price in exchange for a short vacation. Afterwards, Tyler and I got divorced as I wanted. We were also able to settle on a good alimony so that I could look after Lisa on my own. Although I told my in-laws that I couldn't just accept the house for nothing and would pay them back for it in installments, they refused. They said that not only have they had a very high opinion of me up until now, but they also felt some sense of guilt because of what their son did and wanted to help me in any way they could. I did try to fight them on it and said that it was too much, but they reminded me that it wasn't just for me, it was also for Lisa. I would do anything to make sure that Lisa has the best upbringing she can, so I finally agreed. The only condition that they had was for me to try as much as possible to create a home where Lisa didn't feel that she was being raised by only one parent. Of course, I would have done that regardless. I'm sure there will be many difficulties ahead, but for Lisa's sake and to repay the kindness my in-laws have shown me, I will work as hard as I can to make the best home possible for my daughter. Hey Violet, how's it going? You got a minute? Mind if I talk to you about something? Nora? Sure, I'm free. What's up? I've been doing some thinking and it's your mom and dad's 50th wedding anniversary this year, right? I wanted to speak to you about it. You see, we've got a little idea we wanted to pitch to you. Oh, is it? I must have forgotten. Yeah. Anyway, your mom and dad have always been good to me. They're the best in-laws a girl could hope to have, and I feel lucky to have them in my life. So me and Jason have been talking, and we decided we want to splash out to send them on a holiday somewhere nice as a huge once-in-a-lifetime anniversary present. What do you think? Sounds fine to me. Do what you like. I really couldn't care less. Why are you bothering me about it? Well, we were wondering if you'd help us make sure that they have a great time. We want it to be a holiday to remember. You mean you want my money? Well, I wouldn't put it so bluntly, but we were hoping you might contribute a little something to the holiday fund? No chance. You're free to do what you like, but don't try dragging me into things by begging me for money. I'm not begging you and we're not trying to drag you into anything. We just thought it'd be a nice idea if we could celebrate this together as a family. You're their daughter after all. Besides, I heard they paid for the deposit on yours and my brother's house. What better way to thank them for being such amazing parents than to send them on a trip of a lifetime for their golden wedding anniversary? The deposit? Phew, it was only a measly $20,000. They hardly broke the bank. Fine, okay. Would you at least mind riding in a cart for them? If you could, it would be amazing if you could ride them one from little Mikey too. They'd be over the moon to get an anniversary card from their favorite grandson. You know how much they dote on that boy. If that's all you're asking, then I guess I don't mind riding in a card. Mikey can write one himself though. He's 11, you know. Thanks so much, Violet. 
But let me make one thing clear. You're not getting a cent of my money unless you pry it from my cold, dead hands. Why would you waste money on something like that? You must be mad. Something like that? This is your mom's and dad's golden wedding anniversary we're talking about here. They've been together for 50 years. They've always been so good to you, and we'll never get the chance to do this again. I couldn't care less. What's so special about him being married for a long time? What, do they want a medal? Geez, Violet, they're your parents. Besides, you're always buying luxuries like branded clothes, accessories and perfumes, right? Would it really hurt so much to part with a little of that money to jet your amazing parents away for the anniversary trip of a lifetime? We're not asking for much. It'd be nothing in comparison to the designer goods you buy. Who the hell do you think you are? You've got some nerve to speak to me like that. If you were trying to piss me off, you've succeeded. Remember when your dad got hospitalized after his car accident? Not only did you not contribute when we all chipped in to pay his medical bills, but you didn't even visit him. In the end, besides your mom, me and Jason were the only ones who were there for him, physically, emotionally and financially, while you barely lifted a finger. What's the problem with that? Jason's the eldest son. It's the eldest son's job to step in when his parents are in trouble. What did you expect me to do? <laughs> Give me a break. But you literally did nothing. That's not normal. You couldn't even bring yourself to visit your seriously injured dad in the hospital, no matter which way you spin it. What you did was messed up. Not only that, but you and your husband have way more money than me and Jason. The fact that you were in the best position of all of us to help out and did nothing says it all. Sure, we have a lot of money. My husband's a top executive at a major global company. What of it? What are you saying? That us being rich and successful means that you have a right to our money? That's laughable, pathetic, poor people logic. We are not a charity. Well, I see. Fine. You know what? Forget it. To be honest, we were pretty certain you wouldn't help us before we even asked. I only messaged you just in case you changed your way since we last spoke, but I see now that would take a miracle. It's plainly obvious that you're only begging me for money because you have none of your own. This is all just a ploy to pull up my heartstrings, isn't it? How about you stop pretending you're not poverty-stricken losers and just admit your status as miserable bottom feeders? Anniversary holiday fund? Don't make me laugh. You're the last people who have the financial freedom to be paying to send other people on holiday. That's not true. Me and Jason can afford it if we pool our savings. Maybe so, but something like this must be very expensive for a low-income family like yours. Tell me, Nora, what's it like being a peasant? I imagine it must be terribly difficult to get by. I heard you use discount coupons at the supermarket. Can you imagine anything more tragic? What's wrong with using discount coupons? What's wrong? What's right? Think about it. You spend your time saving up scraps of paper to get measly $1 discounts on what was already cheap peasant food to begin with. Maybe if you'd spent your time studying and working hard to succeed in life instead, this unfortunate situation could have been avoided. What a pitiful existence. I could never live like that. I believe it. I heard all about your extravagant spending habits. You spend three hours at the salon every day. You dine at fancy restaurants like you're a member of the global elite. And you wouldn't be seen dead without your peeps, your Armani clothing and perfumes. How does your husband feel about you wasting his money like that? Does he never say anything? Why would he care about any of that? It's pocket change to him. When you're as rich and successful as we are, your sense of money changes. Let's say we have a little more leeway than the likes of you and my brother. My husband could care less about the occasional luxury here and there. I could be wrong here, but something tells me that just because he's away in Seattle on a company transfer doesn't mean he's okay with you blowing his hard-earned money on frivolities. If you're trying to start a fight with me, you're going the right way about it. I suggest you be very careful about what you say next. You always seem to have some kind of whining, niggling complaint every time I come over to see my brother too, don't you? Tell me, Nora, 
Why exactly is it that you don't know how to shut your goddamn mouth? What I spend my money on has absolutely nothing to do with you. Now back off. Jason's sick and tired of your shenanigans too, you know. You're the most selfish, egotistical person either of us ever met. You genuinely think you can do whatever you like as long as it makes you happy, don't you? Cause screw the other people and their feelings, right Violet? Right? <laughs> I think I finally get it. This is your inferiority complex speaking. The desperate attacks of a jealous brokey. Excuse me? You're jealous of me and my luxurious lifestyle, aren't you? Admit it, I can read you like a book. That's why you come at me out of nowhere frothing at the mouth like some rabid attack dog. Poor people make me sick. Have you no shame? Do you have no notion of how despicable it is to pester people for money like this? Or do you just not care? I've had enough of this. Your views on the world are too twisted for me to have any kind of meaningful conversation with you. Sorry to message you so late like this, but I just happened to bump into Mikey. He's still in elementary school, right? Yes. Why? What do you want? I just saw him outside alone walking the dog. It's really late. Should he be out on his own this time? Don't you think it's dangerous? Relax. He does it all the time. He's used to walking the dog. There's nothing to worry about. And sure, he may be in elementary school, but he's in the sixth grade, and it won't be long before he moves up to junior high. But it's past 10 p.m. I get that it's not a bad neighborhood, but you still sometimes see the occasional creep. Do you think it's a good idea for him to be out alone at night? It'd be dangerous even for a junior high or high school kid at this time. Creeps? Don't be ridiculous. You can be such a drama queen. Besides, even if something did happen, the dog would protect him. Seriously? Your 12-year-old chihuahua is going to leap into action and defend your son from some marauding weirdo? I'm telling you, it's fine. You worry too much. Kids these days are so independent, they stay out much later than they did when I was a little girl. I can assure you, you don't need to concern yourself with my son's dog walking routine. Is this why you're so poor? Because you spend your time poking your nose into other people's affairs instead of making money? Forget my financial situation. Look, couldn't you have him go out earlier, like in the daytime? Why do I have to control every aspect of my boy's life? It's his own fault for not going out earlier. I'm not his prison guard. If he must go out at this time. At the very least, couldn't you have gone with him? I'm busy. Anyway, it has nothing to do with me. My son's in charge of all things dog related. He's the one who said he wanted a dog, so it's only right that he takes care of it. The pooch is Mikey's responsibility. Please, Violet. Will you at least consider the possibility that it might not be safe for an 11-year-old to be out on his own at this time of night? If you're not willing to stop him doing it, will you at least let me go with him? It's not just girls that get targeted by creeps, you know. You hear about this kind of stuff in the news all the time. Do what you like. Phew, okay, thanks. I will. I'll let Mikey know he's gonna have some company. Good grief, you're so soft on that boy. I wonder if it's because you have no kids of your own. I suppose it only makes sense that you'd know nothing about raising children. But I do at least wish you wouldn't pester me with trivialities like this. Your son's safety is triviality? Lord, give me strength. Anyway, even if I don't have kids, I know full well how dangerous it can be for a child to be out walking on their own late at night. It's not my job to interfere in every aspect of my son's life. How on earth do you expect him to grow into a disciplined, independent young man if he can't even be trusted to walk with a dog on his own? I guess you always did have a tendency to look the other way when it came to Mikey, huh? Good grief, woman. Quit your complaining already! By the way, where did you end up deciding on for my parents' wedding anniversary holiday? We spoke to them about it, and they said they really wanted to go to a hot spring resort. We did some research on the best spots in America, and we're thinking of sending them to a famous resort in California. Oh, that close? You could have at least sent them further away! Are you aware we live in Washington, my dear? They'll barely feel like they've moved! 
I suppose I should have seen this coming. What with you being extremely poor and all. I mean, California, seriously? Everyone knows that when it comes to hot springs, there's only one place to be. Oh wait, could it be you couldn't afford to send them there? Go on, enlighten me. Where would you send them? The land of the rising sun, Japan, duh! If you couldn't afford that, you could have at least sent them some other place abroad. You know, like Hawaii or Guam. To think you'd send them two states away. My poor parents must be so disappointed. But they said they wanted to go to a hot spring resort. They probably just knew if they said that, you'd send them on a cheap trip to California and not take too much of a hit financially. They were only doing it out of consideration for you. They're aware of how poor you are and didn't want to put you in an awkward situation. It's amazing, really. You make this big show and parade about treating them like royalty for their golden wedding anniversary and then send them to California. If you're gonna celebrate, at least do it properly. Okay, Mrs. Travel Expert, tell me, what does celebrating properly look like? I just told you, going abroad! Take me, for example. I have three trips abroad planned for this year alone. I'm going to Dubai for the summer. That's great, Violet. Good for you. Somewhere exotic like Dubai might be a really attractive holiday destination to a seasoned veteran like you. But I'm not sure your aged parents, who have almost no experience traveling abroad, would see it in the same way. Lots of stuff can go wrong, and when you don't know what you're doing, traveling can be surprisingly stressful. Besides, and I'm repeating myself here, but they're the ones who said they wanted to go to a hot spring resort in the first place. I think a nice easy trip to California is by far the best option for them. That's such a peasant-like way of looking at things. But what did I expect? You are a literal peasant after all. I can't say I don't feel bad for my poor parents, but what do I care? It's not like I'm the one paying for it. Do what you like. I will. We'll decide where your parents go on holiday amongst ourselves. What the hell's going on here? Um, I could ask you the same thing. What the hell do you want? When I went to the supermarket just now, I passed through your neighborhood. The supermarket? Oh no, you don't mean that budget supermarket for poor people a few blocks away, do you? You went again today? Are you gonna spend your whole summer vacation trading in poverty coupons for discount peasant slop at that shabby supermarket? I hesitate to call it a supermarket. Poop market would be more appropriate. Hilarious, Violet. Well done. There's absolutely nothing wrong with buying food with discount coupons at a bargain supermarket during summer vacation, and that's a hill I'm willing to die on. Forgive me. I should have known you can't afford to go on holiday. I see you're just as broke as ever. I know it might seem like I'm harsh with you sometimes, but to tell you the truth, I actually feel sorry for you. You feel sorry for me? At least I'm not such a scumbag I'd leave my poor son on his own while I jet off on holiday. Huh? Mikey was sat all on his own on your front porch. He was sat shivering in his tattered, worn-out clothes while cuddling the dog for heat. He said he was waiting for you to come home. Apparently you told him you were going to work? You saw Mikey? What on earth were you doing at our house? I won a toy car from a lottery event I got entered into with one of my coupons. I thought Mikey would love it, so I stopped by to give it to him. I didn't want to disturb you, so the plan was just to leave it on the front porch for him to find. That's when I found him sat there all on his own. I could barely believe my eyes. Oh, I see. Well, give him the toy and get lost. You don't need to worry about my son. I thought you were supposed to be going away for summer vacation as a family. Why did you leave Mikey on his own? Not only that, but you lied to him and said you were going to work so he thought you'd be back soon. What the hell do you think you're playing at? This is unacceptable. Who told you we were going on holiday as a family? Seems to me like you just assumed it based on nothing. If you must know, I'm on holiday with my friend. 
The only reason I told Mikey a little white lie is so he'd watch the house without kicking up a fuss about not being able to see me for a while. What? You intentionally deceived your son and you see no problem with that? Sure, as soon as I mentioned work, he just gave in and accepted. If I'd have told him I was going on holiday to Dubai with my girlfriend, he'd only have gotten jealous and thrown a tantrum because he wanted to come. I can't believe you. How long has it been since you left for Dubai? Have you no shame? How could you leave your 11-year-old son on his own like this? Take a chill pill, sweetie. He's more than capable of watching the house on his own at his age. Maybe, just maybe I could understand if you left him for a single day if you had urgent business to attend to. But to leave him on his own while you fly aboard to go on a freaking holiday? Who does that? Does he at least have enough food or money to buy some? He was absolutely starving when I found him. I'm sick of your incessant whining. Would you put a lid on it already? Of course he has everything he needs. What do you take me for? Oh, I don't know. The kind of person who leaves their son on his own to fly halfway across the world to sunbathe with her girlfriend? Besides, I know you're lying. He asked me to look at the inside of the house. It was hard to see anything beyond the mountains of maggot-infested garbage, and I definitely didn't see anything resembling money or edible food. Who do you think you are? How dare you enter my house without my permission? I'm taking Mikey back to our house. The dog too. I'm gonna run him a nice warm bath and cook him some supper. He doesn't look like he's eaten anything in days. Quit sticking your nose into my family's business! You'll do no such thing! I'm not listening to a word you say. I feel so sorry for Mikey. I can barely bring myself to look at him in this state. His clothes are worn out. His face has no color. I've seen healthier looking homeless people. Don't worry about us. Just carry on enjoying your precious holiday. I wouldn't want you getting an uneven tan on my behalf. Goodbye. You better have taken my son back to his home where he belongs. Did you? Yes, I took him back home. He's with your husband. What? My husband came back from his work transfer? Little Mikey was in such a horrible state, I had no choice but to call him. When I explained the situation, he apologized and said he'd be on the next flight home. I didn't have his number, so I had to call your mom first. No! No! What have you done? How many times did I tell you not to stick your nose in my goddamn business? You will pay for this! I must say, it looks like someone's been a very naughty girl. Your husband had no idea about your trip to Dubai, did he? But I did tell him I'd be away from the house for a little while. Maybe so, but you lied again, just like you always do. He said you told him you were going on a business trip. What's worse, you told him you were hiring a babysitter so he didn't need to worry about Mikey being on his own. That's what you told him, isn't it, Violet? Lies, lies, and more lies. I gotta say, I've never seen your family this angry before. No, no, no. I didn't mean to hire a babysitter. That was a lie. But she cancelled on me at the last minute. Ah, uh, that dumb girl. None of this would be happening if she'd just done her job like we agreed. I had no time to find another one, and my flight was due to leave, so I had to leave Mikey to watch the house on his own. You didn't have to take him like that. He's used to watching the house. He would have been fine without your meddling. He was starving, Violet. He said all he had left to eat was some candy that he was rationing because he had no idea when you'd be back. Him shivering on the porch cuddled up to the dog like that was the most heartbreaking thing I've ever seen. How could you do that to your own son? I told you I left him some food. He probably just ate it all on the first day. That's hardly my fault. Really? I wonder if it might have had something to do with you lying that you were going to work. He probably expected you to come back that night. Besides, there's no way you left him enough to cover your entire holiday. Now, to change the subject a little, your husband says he noticed you've been blowing his money by indulging in every possible luxury under the sun. You've been lying to him this whole time. What are you talking about? Your wasteful spending habits, obviously. You covered up your husband's rapidly shrinking bank balance with a pack of shameful lies. Repair costs for the roof, money for Mikey's medical bills. Lie after lie after lie, with not so much as a hint about how you were actually spending it on designer goods and fancy restaurants. What was it you said back then? My husband could care less about the occasional luxury here and there? Well, it turns out he could. And what's more, you obviously knew he would. Because you felt the need to hide it from him. 
Forget that. The real question here is, what the heck does any of this have to do with you? This is our problem for us to discuss. It has nothing to do with you. Just who the hell do you think you are? Quit sticking your nose where it's not welcome. That's not everything you lied about either. I know all about the doc too. Apparently you were the one who wanted a chihuahua. But you got bored of looking after it a few months after you bought it, so you stopped caring for it altogether. Leaving Mikey, who thankfully, unlike you, is a decent human being with a heart, to care for it all on his own. How does it feel knowing your 11-year-old son has more sense of responsibility than you? I get it. My brother Jason's probably mad at me, isn't he? I bet this is all coming from him. Admit it, you're just his mouthpiece. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over and see him as soon as I get back from Dubai and I'll hear out everything he has to say. Can you please tell him to put a lid on this endless whining for the time being? Jason's far from being the only one who's mad with you. I'm acting your husband's mouthpiece here too. My husband? Mad doesn't do it justice. This goes beyond mere anger. He's absolutely livid. I've never seen him like this. And who can blame him? You've behaved despicably, forced to jump on the next flight home on a moment's notice from his work transfer out of state after finding out his pathological liar of a wife abandoned his son to jet off to Dubai, probably causing all sorts of problems for his company. And if that wasn't bad enough, he then realizes she's been spending his money like it grows on trees behind his back for God knows how long. Is he really that angry? He's so infuriated he looks ready to explode at any moment. He's even saying divorce is on the table. What? Divorce? Isn't that a bit drastic? Why would he go straight to divorce? Surely we can talk this through. Hmm, I don't know. Jeez, whatever could it be? Maybe it has been something to do with him messaging you every day to ask how Mikey was doing and you telling him barefaced lies by pretending you were actually with him and that he was absolutely fine? I don't know, Violet. Do you think it could be that? Maybe? Just maybe? You obviously knew what you were doing was wrong. Otherwise, you wouldn't have lied about it. Wrong! Mikey really was fine! If you think the disheveled, malnourished mess I found shivering in the cold on your front porch was anything resembling fine, I suggest you go and get your eyes checked out right now. Actually, scratch that. You need to see a shrink. Because you've got a screw loose. Your husband's talking about divorcing you and taking you to the court over custody of Mikey. And if we're honest, after what you did, he'll almost definitely win. I think you should start preparing yourself for your inevitable ejection from the premises when you get home. What? He's gonna kick me out of the house now? Isn't this all too much too soon? What happened to reasonable discussion? It went out the window the moment you decided to abandon your 11-year-old son to go on holiday. Let's hope he lets you gather your belongings when you get back. Maybe if he's feeling extra kind, he'll let you camp out in the yard. Look, fine, I admit it. It could be argued that I told my husband a few too many lies. But even still, don't you think going straight from zero to divorce is a bit drastic? Is he okay with me being homeless? Are you? Could you really sleep at night with me out on the streets? Yes, we're all in agreement. It wouldn't bother us in the slightest. And sure, we'd sleep like babies, thanks. No one here wants to help you. You don't have a single sympathizer in this family. We'd sooner throw our money into a black hole than waste it on a selfish, arrogant narcissist like you. After that, Violet booked the next flight home from Dubai in a frenized panic and showed up at the house the next day. Apparently, she showed up with a suitcase full of flashy souvenirs in an attempt to win her husband over, but the fact she bought them with his money just made him even angrier, and he refused to let her set foot inside the house, collapsing into a crumpled mess on the front lawn. She stayed outside the house for several hours crying, screaming, and begging her husband to forgive her. Naturally, he completely ignored all of it, having no intention of forgiving her for as long as she lives. He continued with the divorce proceedings as planned. The two of them went through divorce court, and while I don't know about the finer details of the ruling, I don't know that her husband won full custody of Mikey, and the two of them immediately moved as far away from her as they possibly could. Both Mikey's mood and physical condition improved remarkably with a few days of moving in with his dad, and now he's been bright, energetic, healthy young man, and he always should have been. 
Mikey wasn't the only one who moved in with his dad. His beloved dog came with him too. He walks him every day without fail. My sister-in-law Violet, on the other hand, who had already been kicked out of her parents' house without a single dollar to her name as a result of her reprehensible behavior, had the gall to show up at mine and her brother's Jason house, begging for money. She got on her knees before us and pleaded, I need money, please. It doesn't have to be much, please, I'm begging you. My husband, who must have been in an extra kind mood that day, tossed a dollar on the ground before her, before saying, never come anywhere near me or my family again. Oh, the irony? To think her entire life now rested on a dollar, after she used to make fun of me for using coupons to get discounts for the same amount at the supermarket, I'm not sure if it was because she suddenly realized how pathetic she was in a rare moment of self-awareness, but in any case, she slowly got up and trudged away, broken and dispirited, her energy and vigor gone. As we watched from behind as she walked out of our lives forever, it was obvious how gaunt and malnourished she'd become. Her confident, self-assured attitude was now nothing but a distant memory. I don't know what happened to her after that, but one thing's for sure, she needed help. There's a satisfying irony in someone who stopped at nothing to avoid helping others suddenly being in dire need of outside support. I hope she realizes what an arrogant, selfish fool she's been, but I'm not holding my breath. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.